Simrad is a world leader in marine electronics. The Simrad that you see is a small part of Simrad's worldwide operations in the commercial, fisheries, exploration, part of marine electronics. Leading technologies in those areas come down to us in the leisure side. So we get to take advantage of all of the things that Simrad does worldwide. Our distribution is international, but we have a very, very large presence in large yachts down to the middle size and into the smaller boats as well. We take our technologies in marine electronics seriously. That's the core of the business, that navigation is serious business. It's what helps keep you safe out there. And what we're going to show you is how those technologies are combined into a single product like the CX-44, a unit that combines GPS, chart plotter, radar, and even a fish finder. We also are the world leader in auto steering and in communications. The CX-44 is a combination unit. We call it a nav station. It can combine all of the functions that I've mentioned, or you can start with the basic GPS chart plotter, add the radar antenna when you wish, and even add the fish finder later if that's what you would like. I'm going to show you the Simrad CX-44 nav station, which is a 10-inch display, and it's part of a family of nav stations under the CX series. We have a 15-inch display. We have the little brother 7-inch display. They all are the same. The keypad that we see here is the same on all, all the machines. There's a smaller family as well, the CP31 and the CX33. The keypad is very similar, the operations are almost identical, and what I show you here will apply to those products as well. A combined GPS chart plotter and radar can do far more than the GPS chart plotter and the radar if they stand alone and are simply interfaced. The screens are designed to be high visibility in all lighting conditions using a minimum of backlighting. The sun view screens are viewable in any lighting condition and will get brighter as the direct sunlight on them gets brighter. The functions that we use the most are now on the prime pad. And the buttons here provide instant access to each major function of the machine. It is this that has made these machines so much easier, faster to use than anybody else's on the market. It uses the very latest CMAP cartography, CMAP Max, and also CMAP NT+. There are two chart drawers in the nav station. You can load two chart cartridges in there for transition from one chart to the next, or you can use a data cartridge to back up all of your waypoints, your routes, and your system settings. The prime pad is the key to operating the nav stations. We have menus, but the goal is to do as many functions as you can without actually going into a menu. Under the enter key are multiple functions for access to radar, chart, and echo sounder menus. The plot key allows you to do many plotting navigation functions without having to go into a separate menu. The go-to functions, cursor, waypoint, routes, immediate access to going somewhere, to putting in a waypoint and going there. This is the key to it. The plus and the minus keys are one way that you can zoom in and zoom out on the chart plotter or go up and down the ranges of the radar and the echo sounder. But of course we have a quick way to do that too. So this is the prime pad and it's the basis for the operation of the machine. The center of the prime pad is a cursor pad. It's how you move the cursor on the radar screen and the chart screen. Simrad is unique in the quick zoom aspects. The ability to jump from a close-in range to a distant range on the chart plotter or from a close-in range to a distant range on the radar. This is a unique feature that you will find has tremendous application for you in your navigation. Simrad is unique in having decided not to use soft keys, but instead dedicated function keys. Radar, chart, echo sounder, and piloting. Where 
pressing that each of those keys gives immediate access to that function and not having to go through a menu series or through soft keys and reading what each of those functions are we felt that this was the fastest most reliable way of getting there other keys to be aware of are the adjust key and the enter key these keys will operate the same way under radar chart and echo sounder giving you immediate fast access to the menus under each of those the most commonly used features or under the adjust key to actually changing a value the man overboard key when pressed for two seconds will lock you into the navigation mode create a waypoint that will direct you back to that exact location now some people with their chart plotters use the man overboard key to save this present position for reasons other than that but you don't have to do that with a simrad nav station we have other ways of doing that and we'll show you how The ability to change quickly from one function to the next was a significant part of the design of the nav stations. We're in the chart mode right now. With a single key press, we're immediately in radar. A single key press, right back in chart. Echo sounder, radar, chart, and you see this piloting key down here. It's this type of information and we'll go right back to the chart. All single key presses, no display keys, no menus, no soft keys. The function keys, radar, chart, echo, and pilot, let you select the function, but also it does more. We use long presses to move through the different screens under the chart functions, and we use short presses to move some data around. Let me show you on the chart key. Quick press opens up a window for the echo sounder. Another quick press gives you the other frequency. The data moves to the side with another quick press. And the fourth quick press brings the data back to the top of the screen. A long press goes to the second screen in the sequence, which will be dual charts. The next press gives you the split function. Another long press, another split function, and then finally, back to the full screen. The sequence is always full, dual, split, Split, full. You can't get lost. Just long presses gets you right back to where you want to be. The same with the radar key. Full, dual. Yes, that's right. Two radar displays can be shown at the same time on Simrad nav stations. Split screen, radar and chart side by side. Multi, and back to the full screen. All without going into menus, all without using soft keys. Echo sounder, full, dual, split, Split multifunction, full screen. The piloting page, full, split, multi, full. We know that if you haven't used the boat for a few weeks, you're not going to remember everything about it, so we built a quick guide into the nav station. In the, under menu and setup, there is a quick guide, and this will help you remember 
what the functions are, what the pages look like. Here are the function keys, and under each of them, full, dual, split, or in the case that we were doing, multi. And you can configure many of these windows however you wish. Full, dual, split, multi. And then it goes right back to full, dual, split, multi as you do repeated long presses on the chart key. And it's the same for radar, same for echo sounder, and the same for your piloting page. Chart plotters do only two things, really, and it's an important thing to keep in mind. They either follow the vessel or they follow the cursor. When they follow the vessel, they're navigating. When they follow the cursor, they're plotting. An important distinction to remember. Here's the vessel. There's the heading marker, the direction in which you're pointing. There's the cursor, and the screen either follows the cursor or it follows the vessel. To get back to the vessel, simply hit clear. All the way out to all the way in with a single key press. Back out again, a single key press or about halfway in for a good workable range. Single key steps to get your preloaded zooms. It's the fastest, easiest way to do it. You can also use your plus and minus keys to adjust the range in a little bit closer or a little bit farther away as you wish. While we're here, let's take a look at a couple of chart details. Move the cursor on the buoy that's right there we see that's number 11. The red one just here, that's number 8. There's a current arrow. Shows you the tidal stream right there. And a little closer in on shore, there's a tide station. It's a T and a diamond. Put the cursor on it. It tells you it's a tidal station which we can easily access and show tide height. You can set your contour lines in different colors to help you easily see channels and drop-offs. At different ranges, you will see different levels of detail. Definite difference between shallower water and deeper water. CMAP cartography includes spot soundings, which can be turned on or turned off. In a cluttered chart environment, you might want to turn them off to give you a more clear chart picture. One of the features of the new CMAP Max cartridges is an anti-grounding alert, like that. It crosses the 16-foot line. CMAP's new MAX cartridges also have tidal predictions so that you can see which way the current is flowing and at what velocity. It will call up the, the feature and you'll see arrows here and as we highlight the time, we can change the time and watch the color and the direction of the arrows change. This is important in planning passages or being in the right place at the right time when you're fishing. We've just come out of the channel and marathon in the Florida Keys. And to set a waypoint, move the cursor, hit go to, and number one, selects cursor there's your waypoint. It's 0.53 miles from where you are. 
With the SimRad chart plotter, you can select single view or a dual view, where with a single key press on the chart key, we split the screen. We can keep an eye on the boat on the left-hand screen, and on the right-hand screen, we can then set our waypoints. We wanted to go over to that bridge. So on the right-hand screen, we move the cursor. In the meantime, we're keeping an eye on the boat on the left-hand screen. Here are the buoys over by the bridge. We'll put a waypoint in there. Here's the waypoint, and here's the route to the waypoint. Using our dual chart function, we'll show you that how we keep an eye on our vessel position here, going towards an active waypoint. And on the other screen, we'll go ahead and put in a route that we want to use to go through that bridge. There's a red frame around this left-hand window. That's the active frame. The keypad is now operating this chart plotter. By touching the window key, W-I-N, win key, this screen will become active. The right-hand screen is now active, so I can scroll over and find that bridge. And we'll set in a couple of waypoints in there for our new route. It's under the plot key. Plot, make route. We have the first waypoint. We have the second waypoint. And we have a third waypoint. There's the route called Route 1. Editing a route is very easy. We've moved the cursor on top of a route point. Hit enter and select number one, edit user data. We're going to move this waypoint, selection number two. I'm just going to move it a little closer to this buoy and hit enter. We're continuing to edit our route I want to drag this waypoint a little farther to the south. So we're going to edit the data and move the point. You can see the leg change. And now I want to add a waypoint. So I'm going to grab that route, edit the data, insert a waypoint. and enter it. And it's done. Now we'll show you what it looks like in the Waypoint Library, the Waypoint and Route Library. Route 1, here's the waypoints and the distance from leg to leg and the bearing. Done. The SimRad nav stations have extensive memory with combinations or totals of up to 35,000 waypoints, 10,000 waypoints with names, 50,000 track points, 50,000 line sections, or 10,000 routes. We're now moving at 30 knots and we want to show you that by pushing the plot key and selecting start track number seven we can call this track whatever we want we're just going to change it to track 22 enter and we start leaving a track it's highlighted on the screen and we have unlimited track points. You can leave these tracks in the machine and it'll, it'll store just as a route. As a matter of fact, you can select a track and follow it as a route, forward or reverse. 
This would be incredibly useful for the fishermen who can track an entire day fishing or drifting and be able to duplicate it. We're going to stop the track, plot, stop track number eight. There's another feature where if you want to mark the position that you're in right at this moment, simply hit the plot key twice. It's now called Ship 1. You can go back and rename that later. And you can rename our waypoints with up to 26 characters. We'd like to insert a waypoint right here near these wrecks so we can go to it later. Move the cursor to it, select Plot. One of the choices is Insert a Waypoint. That's the one I want. It's number three. We're going to call this one dive because we're going to dive on these wrecks later. It's called dive. Here are two really impressive benefits of Simrad's waypoint management. We call dive. We want to give it more information on the screen using our alphanumeric keypad. So we can edit that waypoint, hitting enter and then edit user data, and choosing to edit the waypoint and we can add information such as it's in 24 feet of water using the alphanumeric keypad to go through the numbers and find 24 feet and maybe to, maybe the date and we're going to call this March 05 and here on the screen all the information that you will need about that dive spot is right there for you, not hidden in some list somewhere. A unique SIMRAD feature is that we differentiate between waypoints and route points. Waypoints are individual waypoints that you've selected. Route points are those points that we would normally call waypoints that are within the route, but we, we call them separate. It helps you organize your database better. Here is a route consisting of route points. Here are two waypoints. Two waypoints. And we've decided we want to go to the one of the waypoints. We hit the go to key. We select number two, which is waypoints. And it takes us to our waypoint list. Now we only have four waypoints in here, but if you had 400, it would be very hard to scroll all the way down through the list. So we've given you a quick step. You know it's waypoint 23. You saw that on the screen. So you just press the W key and it jumps immediately to the W's and you see waypoint 23 and you hit enter to accept it. And now here's the course to the waypoint. 334 degrees, 1.93 miles. We have a route from Key West to Miami. We're in Marathon. We want to jump on that route and we want to go to Key West. So we'll zoom in using our quick zoom. And we'll see just offshore is the route. Put the cursor on a route point. call up the information on this, we find it's route point number two from Key West to Miami, and it's 35 miles from the start of that point. Now remember, we're going to be going in the opposite direction, in reverse direction on this route. Go to route number three. Key West to Miami, it's route point number two, and we're going in the reverse direction. Enter. Here we go from our vessel to the route point. The bearing is 210 degrees, distance is 4.7 miles. We're on the next leg, 264 degrees, 35 miles, and we are on our way to Key West. With uh, chart plotters, some people like to run north up, and some people like to run course up or head up. Here's the difference. 
Here's the vessel. We're running south, and the chart is in north up mode. The adjust key gives us access to north up or course up. Watch what happens. Now the land is up here on our left. We're still going south, but now it's at the top of the screen. The benefit in running in course up is that what you see in the front of the boat here is what you see out of your windshield. The benefit of Simrad's dual vision, dual chart screen, is that you can watch both north up and course up modes at the same time. On the left screen, there's the vessel moving south. In the right hand screen, here's the vessel moving south. This arrow points to north. Keep the overview on north up and keep a close up view course up. Radar is easily accessed from the chart plotter simply by pressing the radar key and we're immediately there. This radar target is a coastline. This is an inlet. These are a series of buoys marking the approach to the inlet. We can make an immediate jump using Simrad's alphanumeric key from a close in range, in this case a quarter of a mile, to a distant range, in this case 24 miles. We could do it like everybody else does, range down, range down, range down, range down, and so forth, or we can do it in a single quick jump using keys one through nine, a unique Simrad feature. In this case, we're looking at a 24 mile range, and you see individual 24, 16, and eight mile range rings. At a half mile, we see a half mile and a quarter of a mile range rings. These targets, just on the starboard bow, are these targets at the six mile range. So there we see them at six miles, and there we see them at a half mile. Instant jumps without having to go range up, range up, range up, range down, range down, range down. There's another way to look at it, dual range. On the left-hand screen, there's our inlet. There are the targets on the starboard bow. Here are the targets on the starboard bow. The left-hand screen is set at a range of six miles with two-mile intervals between range rings. The right-hand screen is at three-quarters of a mile. We can set these independently. If we want to come out and take a little bit more of a view on this one, we need to move the red active frame using the window key to the right-hand side and then simply make a jump to a more distant range. Now we see these targets right here, these targets here, this target, the beginnings of it here six miles on one, three miles on the other. It's like having two radars in one. In looking at radar, we have different ways of looking at it. The dark targets on the white background is the best for bright daylight conditions. For nighttime, we have a palette, power, four, enter. That's your best nighttime screen. And here's another daytime screen, power, three, enter. That's a pretty familiar looking screen to you. Back to the full screen radar. Long key presses. Brings us back to full screen. The radar functions that we use most are under the enter key. To make adjustments to change values, we use the adjust key. 
it highlights the menu on the right hand side and we can change the values which are in automatic right now automatic tuning gain and clutter radar is a very useful feature for navigation uh, you automatically think that it's for collision avoidance primarily for that but it's not it's really for three things we use radar of course for collision avoidance but we also use it for weather spotting you can see weather patterns you can see fronts you can see fog banks quite some distance off we also use it for navigation you know how far off of a buoy or off of a shoreline you are on your gps chart plotter but if you also use the cursor on the radar to mark that coastline and check the range and bearing on that it gives you a second source of information if you check what's going on with your radar the distance and the bearing to the beach and on your chart plotter the distance and the bearing to the beach and then you look on your chart plotter and you see you're supposed to be in 48 feet of water and your depth sounder says 45 feet of water or 48 feet of water you've gotten three pieces of information that confirm that where you think you are is probably correct that's safe navigation we're using a, a split radar screen. The left-hand screen is a half-mile range. Here's that ship that, was, that, that passed us before. It's now in and turning for his berth. The right-hand screen is at an eighth of a mile range and shows targets that are very close up. Now watch as we turn on the radar overlay and the chart in the left-hand screen, and now the chart image has come up underneath it. Here are the buoys on either side of us. Here's the ship turning in the center of the basin. These are cruise ships, and this is the long bulkhead over at Port Everglades, where that, where that ship is going in right now. A lot of information on two screens, two different radar images plus a chart image all on one screen, and then with a single key press, we're back to the chart image. Here we are on the split screen. There's our location on the radar, right smack in the middle of the channel, and you can see here we are on the chart right smack in the middle of the channel. There's a red mark just off our port, green off of our starboard, and these are the targets here on the radar screen. Large powerboat moving ahead of us here. Incoming target right next to him. Just appearing at the top of the screen, we'll show you, we'll go out to another range. There's a large container ship coming in. So we're gonna move the range out The radar redraws and the chart redraws to match that scale. We see a large target appearing out here. Right now I'm not sure if it's a buoy or what it is, but I'm going to move the cursor. And that's the location right there. Probably a vessel. Not a buoy. There are two marks here close side by side, and we're seeing them on the chart plotter here. We're going to go back to the radar overlay and see what it looks like there. The overlay is on now. These are the radar images of the land on top of the chart image. You see the buoys out here and the radar image for the buoys. Also notice a Simrad unique feature is that the radar targets, the actual radar targets themselves, do not obscure the nav aid that they're trying to represent. And that's because the designers very cleverly took the layer off the chart that has all of the nav aids and put it on top of the radar image. Nobody else does that. The radar picture of the buoy obscures the buoy that you're trying to see, but not with a Simrad nav station. As we're underway here, there's a white line on the radar screen from our position, which is the center of the circles, straight ahead of us. That's a heading marker. You see there's a large target on that heading marker. That's that big Hatteras right in front of us. You'll see him just passing our position as well. There's a target just off to the left side of our position on the screen. And those blue patches to either side of the main channel are the various canals in Fort Lauderdale as we're getting down towards the 17th Street Bridge. Right at the very top of the screen, you'll see the drawbridge appearing. It's a large 
concrete and steel structure, it's a good target for seeing on radar. On either side of the main channel, what looks to be uh, docks, you're seeing mega yachts that are in the neighborhood of 80 to 120 feet long that are stationed that are between us and the dock. On radar, you can't see a target that's behind another target. So the radar is not actually seeing the bulkhead or seeing the dock. It's actually seeing the boat that's moored to the dock. Just coming out from under the bridge, you'll see a large radar target. It's a catamaran type sightseeing boat just coming through the bridge and you can see it very clearly emerge from underneath the bridge target. Once we get through the bridge, we'll start to pick up the opening of the larger Port Everglades Basin, which is a major shipping port, and we should be able to see some cruise ships that are lying in their berths waiting to take folks out for uh, their holiday weekends and holiday trips. The radar target now fades as we get under the bridge, and what you're seeing is the chart image of the bridge as we're directly under that bridge and radar doesn't look up. As we pass the bridge, you'll start to see the bridge radar image appear astern of us. There's a big target on our port side. That's the Queen M, another large mega yacht. On the starboard side is a massive radar target. And that's the Regal Princess, one of the Princess cruise line ships. Another power boat approaching, approaching on our port side. You'll see that target very clearly. And the bridge is just disappearing off the bottom of the screen. Just appearing on the left-hand side of the screen are two navigation buoys. They're swinging around on our bow now as we're turning towards them. There's a red marker floating in the water, and then there's a green marker on a post. And in between them is a catamaran, a sailboat. You can see those three images. The center one is the catamaran. The right hand one is the red buoy. The left hand one is the stake or the day mark. The overlay is on now. These are the radar images of the land on top of the chart image. You see the buoys out here and the radar image for the buoys. Also notice a Simrad unique feature is that the radar targets, the actual radar targets themselves, do not obscure the nav aid that they're trying to represent. And that's because the designers very cleverly took the layer off the chart that has all of the nav aids and put it on top of the radar image. Nobody else does that. The radar picture of the buoy obscures the buoy that you're trying to see, but not with a Simrad nav station. We're on the radar overlay image. Here's a very large radar target coming right between the buoys out there. And you'll see when we move the camera that a ship makes a very, very good radar target. The target coming at us, we want to know if we're going to clear all right. I'm moving the EBL, electronic bearing line, right on top of the target right here. Watch him come down the bearing line. If he comes all the way down the electronic bearing line, that's a collision. We need to make a decision here. We need to go one way or the other. If we turn to the left, he goes outside the bearing line and will pass outside and astern of us. If he had continued down that bearing line, that's a collision. That tells you slow down or make a dramatic change right now so no, somebody knows which way you're going. That's the electronic bearing line. Now we'll set the EBL on the left-hand side. That's number one. And we mark that first target. And number two marks the second target. Range and bearing to targets are shown here, EBL1 and the variable range marker VRM1, EBL2, and VRM2. This was the last one we did, so you'll find this information in larger numbers up here on the screen. Guard zone is another extremely useful radar feature. You can set an area 
anywhere around the boat and be warned when targets come into the guard zone or when they leave the guard zone. It's set using the EBLs under the entry key. Activate EBL1. We set the outside of the marker. EBL2 sets the inside of the zone. Then we set the guard zone using the adjust key and mark it for targets that come into the zone. There's your guard zone set. If any target comes into that zone, it'll trigger the alarm. We showed how using the echo sounder, we can go back in time, go back behind the boat, and create a waypoint right from the echo sounder. But we can do the same thing from the radar. As we're leaving the inlet and we're running out, we notice on the radar screen a variety of boats, or maybe birds, off here on the starboard bow. We want to go there. Move the cursor out to where that target appears, hit go to, and number one for cursor. There's your waypoint. Right here on the radar screen. Now we go to the chart plotter, and it's right here. Bearing 139 degrees, distance is 8.5 miles. SIMRAD was first to realize and incorporate the advantages of high-speed radar updates by increasing the speed of the antenna rotation. Normal antenna rotation is 24 RPM, as you see here. You can manually engage 48 RPM or let it automatically speed up depending on vessel speed. The faster the boat, the more difficult it is to get a smooth target acquisition. Targets tend to jump across the screen. So with a faster radar an antenna, you'll see fast targets move more uniformly across the screen. The other advantage is that in dual radar, you will now have a normal radar picture on each screen, 24 RPM here and 24 RPM here. When you have a lot of traffic around you, it's, uh, you want to be able to get a quick idea of the relative directions that people are taking. Using the trail feature on radar is a handy tool. Trails are found here under the adjust key, and you can select 30 seconds, one minute trails, in this case, 30 seconds. Now you'll see a red trail behind all the targets. Remember, we're going straight. So anything that is stationary is going to have the same length red trail behind it, straight up and down. Anything that is going in a straight direction relative to us is going to have a straight trail, but it'll be perhaps twice as long. Vessels that are not going in the same direction or the opposite direction from us will appear as a diagonal line, a diagonal trail. So it really helps you sort out moving targets from stationary targets. True Motion is a radar feature that allows you to move across the field. When you get that you just saw, we just jumped from about 20% up in the top of the screen down here. Now, we move across the screen. We have the trails turned on. So any target that's moving relative to us shows up with a red tail. Everything else is pretty much stationary. So it just makes it easier for you to see the moving targets. Here, this is pretty stationary, but that's because that's a vessel moving the same direction we are. Here's a moving target here. Just makes it easier for you to see what's moving relative to you. From our radar screen, or from any screen, it's just a single key press to go right to another function, in this case, the echo screen. And for daylight viewability, we like to use the white screen. Power, palette number one, enter. 
the colors on a white background give you the brightest, best contrast on a bright sunny day. We set the screen up for the easiest viewing right now, but there are many features that can also be added to the screen. The most familiar being a scope or what is happening under the transducer exactly at this moment. The enter key is where you find all of the quick features. We can change the frequency from 50 to 200 kilohertz. We can activate the A-scope with key press number two. The A-scope is this column, and it's what's happening under the transducer at this moment, real time. And then the history begins here. So you'll see a target appear on the A-scope, and it'll immediately appear on your main screen. This is bait. These are individual fish. We like to see bait as bait because that's what the fish are looking for. You'll also see there's fish here on the bottom. The density of the bottom is represented that most dense targets by the red. And you'll see that there's a blue color just above that bottom. Now we can enhance that so you can see it more clearly as you see more targets on the bottom. We can use a bottom lock feature. It's under the enter key. Bottom lock display splits the screen. We take the, the jiggy bottom and we flatten it out. So now these little targets that are lying in the crevices, laying on tops of the structures, are easier to see in the bottom row. This is this, and that's fish. To help differentiate what's bottom and what's targets on the bottom, there's a feature called white line that can be turned on underneath the adjust key. Scroll to the white line, turn it on, hit enter. Now you will see more clearly what's bottom and what's targets on top of the bottom. To go back to a standard display, it's very simple. Go back into edit, under enter, choose number three, which is the standard echo display, and there it is, and the white line is still on. We can choose bottom zoom or bottom expansion. The quick menu is under the enter key. Zoom display is number five. And it amplifies what you see on the main display, on the bottom display. The range that you're seeing above the bottom is selectable. To go back to the standard display, enter. Choose the standard echo display, which is number three and you're back where you started. The gain control is like the volume on your TV. It's like gain on your radar. Here we have a fairly weak signal. It's not very intense. Red is more, are more intense colors. So let's increase the, the gain. You can use the cursor pad and simply touch left or right to increase the percentage of gain. The more intense the return, the deeper and redder the colors. We can split screen, do dual functions. With the 44 series, we have twin 1000 watt transceivers in this unit. It's basically two fish finders in one. With a dual element, dual frequency transducer, as opposed to a single element transducer, we can show both frequencies simultaneously. A long key press on the echo key, and now we have 50 kilohertz running in the left-hand window and 200 kilohertz running in the right-hand window. 50 kilohertz is a low frequency, generally used for deep water. 200 kilohertz is a wider beam used in shallower water. Seeing them both together at the same time tells you a lot more about what's going on under the boat than using just one frequency. 
We're running along the south side of the Keys at 35 knots. We want to keep an eye on the echo sounder, and we can do that, as we showed you earlier, with just a short touch on the chart plotter key, and it opens up an echo sounder window. In this case, the second press will give us 200 kilohertz right here. Now what we're doing is we're running out where we're going to fish for the day, but in the meantime, we're looking for structures. We're looking for holes and lumps, and we may see something right there. So a single key press on the echo screen takes us to the echo. We hit plot. It freezes the screen. And number three is insert a waypoint. Now you'll see why we're going to be doing this. We're actually going back in time, in this case, about 15 seconds and we've inserted the marker here in the bottom of this hole. We press enter and it sets a waypoint. We go back to the chart screen and here's the waypoint. When we come back later in the day we can stop and we can find that same hole. That's one of the benefits of having two features like chart plotter and echo sounder in the same box. You can't do that when the units are independently installed.